and two years ago I was asked to start the first ever release mode management program at my organization. The need for release management was prompted by some deploys that, let's say they didn't go well. Maybe you're familiar. Uh, a new feature of BuffBank seems to go out to a customer, everyone works hard to get it ready. All that's left to do is deploy. The easy part, right? Well, in our case, everyone was doing their best, and yet, everything was burning down. <laughs> Responsibilities were unclear. People were disappointed in each other for having missed important prep work. Jargon and acronyms were piling up like a wall of confusion, and then came the rollbacks. We all wanted things to go better. But here's the thing. A lot of folks didn't want release management. They, understandably, wanted something better. Say it with me, no more deploys. Just kidding. They, <laughs> they wanted continuous integration, continuous deployment, and for good reason. As we know, CICD can automate out a lot of the confusion that plagues deploys, and it lessens the pressure on each individual deploy. I believed in the CICD dream too. But the thing is, we had a long way to go. So while we worked on automated pipelines, testing, better monitoring, it was to find, time to find out how we could use release management as a catalyst for CICD while making deploys less awful. First step, checklists. So I had every team write out a checklist of how exactly to deploy their code from sandbox to staging to production. It was surprisingly hard and super helpful. It created pre predictability in the short term and it also gave us a baseline so we could see where we were still spending time and effort on manual steps and then replace and omit those as we automated them. It also had the benefit of helping allow more junior team members to contribute. Previously, only the most seasoned engineers were willing to step in and deploy code. But with the help of the checklist, we lowered the barrier so everyone could contribute and deploy their own code. Having a release manager watching all of the deploys also helped us pick up on patterns. So one engineer might see, Jenkins is running a bit long, slowing down my deploy, it must be just a blip. But a release manager can see, this is a pattern, this is universal, we need to add more workers and speed everything up. I also asked product leads to give us a little bit more notice when we were scheduling deploys and also to set a deadline for the deploy. This gave time for teams with uh, interdependent APIs to review each other's code before deploying it, which was really helpful for not breaking each other's stuff. And it also got teams used to checking in on the health of shared environments before deploying code to those environments. All of these things put together increased trust between product and engineering and uh, within engineering teams too. We went from angst and dread over deploying um, to a feeling of at worst predictability and at best empowerment. Along the way, we also tried some things that might have helped in the short term but didn't necessarily set us up for success with CIC. The first one being that setting clear expectations about deadlines can sometimes lead to taking shortcuts in order to meet that deadline. So imagine this, an automated deploy pipeline is busted, an engineer wants to prioritize getting that code out the door on time, so they bypass the broken part and deploy the code manually. That would lead to backsliding on our progress. We also found that release managers can be really helpful in a lot of ways, including facilitating decisions, keeping teams on track, but they need to leave a light footprint because teams need to be used to talking to each other. A release manager shouldn't become a required intermediary on a team. So overall, we found that clear process can build confidence and good habits, but it's important to pay attention to what habits you're building. With better planning and documentation and more team autonomy, we were able to solve deployment pain without sacrificing our long-term progress towards CIC. In two years, we went from an 8% to a 2% rollback rate, while our deploy productivity uh, increased almost tenfold. So if your organization is moving towards continuous deployment, don't be afraid to lean on release management practices along the way. I'd love to talk with you more about how it's going for you. Um, find me this afternoon or on Twitter. Thank you so much.